This is Akash Vani. In the program Money Talk, now we bring you a discussion on combating cyber crimes. The participants are Rupa M, Director, Indian Cyber Crime Coordination Center, and Nishit Kumar, anchor. Cyber crime is one crime which has been gaining gigantic proportion in recent times, and the government as well as other stakeholders are doing their best to tackle the menace. And today, to discuss the issue, we are privileged to have amongst us in our studios Rupa M, director with the Indian Cyber Crime Coordination Center. Welcome to our studios. Thank you. First of all, we'd like to know what a cyber crime is and what are its types. Cyber crimes are crimes which is committed through use of ICT infrastructures, information and technology infrastructures. There are two types of cyber crimes. There are cyber dependent crimes and cyber enabled crimes. Cyber enabled crimes are those crimes which are conventional crimes which are committed through use of information and technology infrastructure. Whereas cyber dependent crimes are such crimes where computers, computer devices, and resources are used as a tool to commit cyber crimes. For example, hacking, ransomware attacks, DDoS attacks. All these are cyber crime, cyber dependent crimes. Whereas normal identity theft, online financial fraud, online crimes against women and children, social media related crimes, all these are cyber enabled phishing, crimes. Phishing as well. Phishing yeah. as well. So this is really a very uh, serious issue. So what impact do you see of cyber crime on citizens, the economy and security of a nation? The volume of cyber crime is very high. There is a financial loss, monetary loss to the citizens. There are people who have lost their lifelong savings to these kind of crimes. And it is an emotional trauma to them. There are repetitional damages. There are such kind of cyber crimes where victims are not coming forward to report such crime to the police because of repetitional damages. Many of these crimes are not being reported to the police or to the I4C on their portal. The large number of crimes are there. Then there is also national security involved because many a time data harvesting happens. Data breaches do happen and personal informations are being collected by the criminal threat actors and these are being shared to other criminal actors to commit fraud. Sensitive information might be shared with adversary countries which is used for espionage purpose or for spying on the citizens of the country and for other purposes. As a result of it, there is national security also involved. And since the volume of the crime is high and the money lost is huge, it has an economic impact too. So once a person has actually become a victim of a cyber crime, of course, beyond the trauma and everything, he must act and uh, do something to address the menace. So what should a person do if at all he becomes a victim of cyber crime? Once he becomes a victim of cyber crime and he realizes that he is a victim of cyber crime, immediately he has to report the crime to the nearest police station. That is one option. In case if he is not able to go to the nearest police station, sitting from his home, wherever he or she is, he can report the cyber crime on cybercrime.gov.in, the platform which is provided by I4C for online reporting of cyber crime and another one for online financial fraud they can call 1930 helpline and report their complaints that's a national helpline number yeah that is a national helpline number and these complaints once they are reported they are sent to the jurisdictional police station the victims can then go there and contact them and help the local police in carrying out investigation of those crimes is it necessary for a person who is a victim of cybercrime to go ahead to the police station and register an FIR purpose? It is not. In the sense, they can report it sitting from there. But in case of FIR registration by the local police, they have to contact the local police and they have to assist them in carrying out the investigation. Without complainant assistance, the local law enforcement agency will not be able to carry out the investigation and hence detection would be very difficult. The cooperation from the complainant is important. What's the role being played by I4C in all this ecosystem and how far have you been successful in actually delivering the goods? The vision of I4C is safe cyberspace. I4C is an organization of Ministry of Home Affairs. This organization was created in order to provide a framework 
for coordinating action in the field of cyber crime i foresee deals with all aspects of cyber crimes except carrying out investigation of cyber crimes we are focusing on creating awareness to the public on cyber crimes and how the citizens has to take care for prevention of cyber crime then another important aspect where i foresee is working is capacity building of the law enforcement officers the judicial officers and the prosecutors and in the field of forensic assistance is being provided to the law enforcement agency in carrying out investigation of the cases then i foresee is also doing threat analytics based on the information complaints that is being shared with us and then we are taking action on so many identifiers which are being misused by the criminal actors by way of blocking of those content under various provisions of it act and also we are coordinating with the regulators to fix those gaps so that these are not misused by the threat actors in cyber crime the important infrastructures that is misused by the cyber criminals are it infrastructure where your social media platform and other intermediaries come in the second is the telecom infrastructure where your sim cards are being misused and the third is the banking infrastructure where the mule accounts are being used to commit fraud for payments and payouts and for laundering purpose and the other is the human resource itself these are some of the infrastructure which are being used by the criminals to commit fraud i foresee is focusing on identifying the gaps and then coordinating with the regulators so that these gaps are fixed Does I for C have on the portal a window or some system on which the victim can directly go and lodge their complaints or make a grievance? Yeah, I for C is providing two platforms. One is the cybercrime dot gov dot in. Anybody sitting from their home can go to the website cybercrime dot gov dot in and they can report the complaint over there. the other cyber crime helpline number 1930 all the states have set up their infrastructure in their states and then there are call takers in the states and they take the calls and then the information lands on our portal can a victim do all these things like uh, reporting to the police lodging an fir and then also lodging a complaint on the i4c portal can they do this parallelly they can do it parallelly so that it can be taken up simultaneously it can be taken up okay so on sunday the honorable prime minister mentioned in his man ki baat program about men is called digital arrests which is happening these days now this has assumed almost gigantic proportions these days now what is digital arrest and what actually can be done the prime minister also mentioned about the cyber security thing and in fact in the program there was this message of an actual victim of a cyber fraud so he was trying to lay emphasis on how the citizenry can become more aware and more vigilant about their rights about the action that they do on the virtual platforms yeah digital arrest is a type of cyber crime wherein fraudsters impersonate senior officials from reputed law enforcement agency for example cbi ed tri sebi rbi then nia and so many other income agency tax. like yes. ha, income tax customs yes. delhi police mumbai police right. they impersonate right. they call the fraudsters and they say that they are involved in a particular crime for example they might say that a parcel has gone in their name where there is a drug in that one it has come to their notice that they are involved in certain crimes and then an fir has been registered against them there are n number of reasons that they give to the victims the victim gets scared listening to them and subsequently they ask the victims to come on video call either through skype or through whatsapp and then they are informed that they are digitally arrested and they are made to sit in front of them and they are questioned interrogated and subsequently all these actions are done in order to extort money they extort money in the name of bail security in the name of handling not registering the fir also and also to settle the matter so there are a number of reasons through which they try to ask money extort money from the citizens from the victims but the victims have to understand there is no concept of digital arrest under indian absolutely. law absolutely many are ignorant of that fact and when the call comes they get panic so there is no Correct. reason to get panic as honorable prime minister in his man ki baat has told they have to adopt a strategy of wait think and take action absolutely. so when such call comes you just wait relax 
take a deep breath and think what is happening you normally know the victim knows that he has not committed that crime he has to be confident about himself and try to take time and then he has to take action he has to think that he will go to the police station and report he can say that one to the fraudsters and he should confidently answer that i have not committed such kind of crime so there is nothing you can do whatever you want they can go approach the local police station so these kind of tactics they have to use and simply cut the call also just block the number or you cut the number and there is no need to carry Absolutely. forward the con- so that's uh, a, conversation that's a thumb rule once to know that you are you are on the right side of the law you haven't yeah. committed any crime or any such thing yeah. you need not panic you need not fear at all yeah. and just as you mentioned just cut the call or maybe block it or even report it to the police and other agencies and things like that and yes our honorable prime minister emphasized this thing that there is no such thing as digital arrest there is no such provision under the indian laws wherein it talks about uh, digital arrest so people must take note of that no investigating officer calls anybody and interrogates on the video call it is normally a notice is served to the person yes. whom they want to speak and yes. they are called to the police station or as per the law they are supposed to Correct. proceed ahead on that Correct. notice Correct. and question them or interrogate Correct. them or record the statement right. for that matter right. so there is no need to panic coming to the basic problem of uh, cyber security cyber frauds happening all over now we all know that we can't live without the internet it's the age of internet we can't just move we can't literally breathe without the internet these days now with the exponential rise of the internet it's all around growth and things like that the cyber criminals also getting smarter by the day every day day in and day out and we have seen what's happening all around so what can actually the government and other stakeholders do of course prevention is one thing which you underscored uh, when we talked about it earlier. Yeah. but what more can the government and the cyber the other stakeholders do about it the other stakeholders have to identify the regulatory gaps that exist and then try to fix those regulatory gaps when the feedback comes so that those gaps are not utilized by the cyber criminals when i highlighted that the banking infrastructure is being misused here telecom infrastructure is being misused it is very important that action is taken on those gaps that is there in order to fix those gaps and all the stakeholders have to come together in cyber crime there are many stakeholders there is meti then there is dot then there is various regulators like rbi sab tri right. there is mha all different departments ministries regulators have to come together and work in a coordinated way to resolve the issues and try to prevent the cyber crimes from happening that is one important thing and the second is every stakeholder have to carry out massive awareness program and these awareness program has to reach till the field level to the last person at the ground to the right. panchayat level that right. is what honorable home minister during the first foundation day celebration of i4c 10 september 2024 he emphasized the fact that massive awareness program has to be carried out and it has to reach till the panchayat level and four key initiatives of i4c was launched by honorable home minister during this particular celebration one was the cyber fraud mitigation center then we have samanvai platform was inaugurated which is providing lea the law enforcement agencies assistance in handling and tackling cyber crimes and there is a suspect repository the services of which is being used by various banks and financial intermediaries to identify the suspects so that the suspect in whose name already bank accounts are open they are not able to open the bank account in other banks thank you so very much for having joined us and shed so much of light for the benefit of our listeners thank you so much welcome You were listening to a discussion on combating cyber crimes. The participants were Rupa M, Director, Indian Cyber Crime Coordination Center, and Nishit Kumar, Anchor. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of Akashvani. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. You may share your feedback about this program through email. at airnsttalks@gmail.com or whatsapp on 9289094044